the scripture. We're going to 1 Samuel, the seventh chapter, because right now I feel a praise breaking up in my spirit. I feel a praise. I feel a praise. I feel a praise. All of my shape. I feel a praise. I'm praising him. I'm praising him. I'm praising him because two and a half months ago, well, three months ago, I had COVID. Three and a half months ago, I lay on the bed going through the symptoms and going through the, the wranglings of a disease that had no cure but God. <laughs> but God. Uh, it, 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 was, it, was, it, was, it was two and a half months ago that I came in and I did a midweek service and got so sick as I drove home and I broke out into such a hard, heated sweat and, 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 and I couldn't drive any further and I had to pull over at 10.30 at night on Southern State Parkway where nobody was on the road because of quarantine and pull over and take my, shirt, my jacket off and my shirt off I was burning up and, on the, and, and open up the door of the car and the devil was saying the devil was saying, you're going to die here and nobody will know and they'll find you. And I, I did the boat. And I literally had to get out of the car and lay on the grass face down saying, God, if this is how I'm going to go, let me praise you before I leave. And immediately my body broke out into a hard sweat. It's like somebody turned the water faucet on. A hard sweat. I mean, I've, I've never sweat that hard in that matter of moments. And when the sweat hit, the fever lifted. And I got all my strength back. And I got about up. And I got up out of the grass. And I got up and I walked around my car. Oh, baby, be oh, shut me. Walked around my car praising God. Because in the old my shender, in a moment I could have been gone. But God. But I got my shit. But God. Drove myself home. Lay on the level of a horse. Lay down and went to sleep. Stayed quarantined, and God brought me through. And I know there's other people here that God brought you through. Just take a minute and give God a good praise here. <laughs> take a second and give God a good, a good gratitude praise. I am so grateful. Hallelujah. There are some things that have to be acknowledged. We've got to acknowledge. We've got to acknowledge that God, for some reason, has allowed us to remain. In a pandemic that has taken over 120,000 lives and it's still growing, we're still here. Oh, we're still here. Still here. Still here. 
The Bible says in the book of Samuel, and I'm trying to get through this thing because I've only got about 20 minutes. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 7 and 1. 1 Samuel. It says, And the men of Kajet Jerem came and fetched up the ark of the Lord, and they brought it to the house of Abinadab in the hill. And they sacked and they sanctified Eleazar, his son, to keep the ark of God. The ark represents the presence of the Lord. And it came to pass, while the ark abode in Kerjet Jerem, that the time was long. It stayed there for a long time, 20 years. And all the house of Israel cried and lamented after the Lord. And Samuel the prophet spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, if you, do, if you do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away, put away the strange gods and Ashtoreth. Put them away from among you and prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only. And he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the children of Israel did put away Baal and put away Ashtoreth and they finally got back to the basics of serving the Lord. Hallelujah. And serving him only. And Samuel said, gather all Israel to Mitzvah and I am going to pray for you unto the Lord. And they gathered together into Mitzvah and they drew water and they poured it out before the Lord and fasted on that day and stayed and, and said there, we have sinned, we confess God, we have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mizpah. But now when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together in Mitzvah, the lords of the Philistines got up and went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the pandemic. They were afraid of the uprising. They were afraid of the Philistines. You can't be afraid of the enemy. I said, you can't be afraid of the enemy. And the children of Israel said to Samuel, do not cease to cry unto the Lord our God for us, that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a suckling lamb, offered it for a burnt offering, holy, totally unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord of God of Israel, and the Lord, I don't hear you, and the Lord heard him. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near. The enemy tried to attack while they were worshiping God. The enemy tried to attack while they were worshiping God. The Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord, God got involved. And the Lord thundered with a great thunder on, the day upon, on that day upon the Philistines. And he discomfited them. And they were smitten. The enemy was smitten before Israel. And the men of Israel went out to Mitzvah. And they pursued the Philistines and they smote them until they came unto Beth. Car. Then Samuel took a stone, and this is where I will stop. Then Samuel took a stone, and he set it upon, he set it between Mitzvah and Shen, and called the name of it Ebenezer. Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto, up until this point, to this location, hitherto hath the Lord helped us. Hitherto, I preached this a couple a week ago, but the Lord really laid it on me to preach it again. That if it had not been for him taking us and walking us through this, Psalm 124 and verse 1 said, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, then he said, now let all of Israel say, let all the people say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, hallelujah, if it had not been 
for the Lord who is on our side. Let Israel say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, when men came and rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us up quick. This thing would have swallowed us up quickly. When their wrath was kindled against us, the Lord made sure that we were protected. Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. Up until this point, he has remained faithful. He has not failed us in any way. But pastor, you don't understand. I've suffered so much. I know. But he kept you through the suffering. Now, let me, let me slow down a bit. God has always been on our side. Always. But sometimes the situations that we're in cause our view of him to dim. God has always looked out for us. God has always prepared for us. God has always provided for us. God has always secured us. God has always kept us. Always, always. I don't care what you've been through and how much you've lost and how bad it's hurt. God has never left his post. God has never left his post. The Lord never sleeps, nor never slumbers. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He is on our side. And some things that we go through is just called life. And, and we have this, this, uh, this unreasonable expectation that once we become Christian, things are supposed to work out, you know, rosy all the time. But in, in, in some cases, in order for things to work out, there's got to be a conflict. Sometimes in order for things to work out, there must be a conflict. Before you get to the solution, there's a problem. Amen. In math, before you can get to the solution, you've got to resolve the problem. I don't hear anybody. And, and that's the same thing in life. And our, our, our unreasonable expectations cause us to believe that with Christ, I can do all things. You can. But it doesn't mean that you're not going to have to go through some things. It doesn't mean that you're not going to have to deal with the vicissitudes of life just like everybody else does. Your relationship with Jesus Christ does not exempt you from life and life situations. It just gives you assistance and gives you peace and walks you through it with confidence that although I'm going through what everybody else has gone through, I'm going through it with God on my side. I'm going through it with God on my side. I may lose here, but I'm losing with God on my side. And if I lose with God on my side, he's going to make it up for me on the next go around. He's got my back. He's got me covered. I don't hear anybody. And, and, and if I hurt with God on my side, he will heal the hurt. I won't have to deal with life by myself. I won't have to deal with my tomorrow in ignorance because God knows my tomorrow yesterday. Y'all miss that. God knew my tomorrow yesterday. He knows the end from the beginning. And if God is on my side, no matter what I deal with, even if I fall, even if I fall, even if I, in my disobedience, fall, it doesn't change him. It doesn't make him leave. He doesn't divorce me in my fall. But he's even with me in my fall. Because that's he's with me in my fall. That's the conviction in my fall. That's the correction in my fall. That's the help out of my fall. I don't hear anybody here. God is on our side. And he will never leave our side. He will never leave our side. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 118 verse 6, it says the Lord is on my side. Somebody say that. I want you to say it like you believe it. Say, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. And then ask this question. 
what can any man do unto me? I got to hear you say it. What can any man do unto me? What can anything happen? How can anything happen that's outside of God's parameters? What can any enemy plot against me? What can any disease do unto me? I am in his hands and he is on my side. He is by my side. And as long as he's on my side and for me, in the book of Romans, Paul said to the Roman church, 8 and 31, he said, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for me, who can be against us? That's it all by itself. If God is for us, who can be against us? David said, the Lord is on my side, so I will not fear. What can anybody do against me? Nobody can take me down and nobody can take me out because I've got the angel of the Lord encamped round about me. They've got an assignment from God. God has given his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. They will bear me up in their hands. Lest I dash my foot against a stone. God is on our side. The pandemic has left people wondering what is next. But the Christian doesn't wonder. Medical professionals and scientists are saying that there will be a, another surge in September, October. But if he got us through January till now, hitherto has the Lord helped us. If he helped us from January till now, and we're still here, if in the worst of it, the worst of it, when it hit us unawares, when there was no advance notice, and God still walked us through, if he got us to this point, he'll take us all the way. I need somebody to have faith in God. I need somebody to have faith in God. He, he did not fail. And to this very day, we are here by the grace of God. Because before the pandemic, there were situations. Before the pandemic, there were diagnoses. Before the pandemic, there were, there were heartbreaks. Before the pandemic, there was, a, there, there was economic hurt. Before the pandemic, there was emotional upheavals. Before the pandemic, this just didn't start with a pandemic. We've been walking with God a long time. We know God. We're not just finding out about him in this situation. We know God. We're not just trusting him now. We trusted him before. And if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, we would have been dead hospital visits a long time ago. There were so many things that have come up in our lives that should have cut our lives short. So many things that have happened in our lives that should have caused us to lose our control and lose our mental capacity. There are so many things that came up that should have had us in a poor house, in a shelter, sitting on the side of a road. But God, but God, who is rich in mercy, took us in his care and he brought us this for somebody holler he brought me he brought me he brought me he covered our children before this happened he covered our children broke the yokes over our children protected our families before this happened we didn't just start trusting in god before this happened he got us out of real dire straits he, he made ways out of nowhere he opened up doors before this happened 
we're not just learning how to trust God. We've been trusting him since we first bent our knee to him. We've been calling on him since we first gave our lives to him. Somebody give God praise right here. Somebody give God praise right here. Somebody give God praise right here. This, this, this isn't our first time at the rodeo. It's not our first experience. Many of us have gone to the point and very brink of death. And God backed death up and said, not yet. God backed death up and said, no, not yet. There's a purpose for them. And we're still here because God brought us thus far. A broken heart doesn't stop God from moving. Loss doesn't stop God from being God. Financial poverty doesn't stop God from providing. Sickness doesn't stop God from healing. I don't hear anybody. Nothing stops God. God is greater than every pandemic. God is greater than every uprising. God is greater than every situation. And this great God is on our side. And this great God is on our side. So we learned how to raise our hands. And we learned how to praise him even if tears flow down our cheek. The cry doesn't stop the praise. The, 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 the pain doesn't stop the praise. The pandemic doesn't stop the praise. The problem doesn't stop the praise. Because the praise happens when I think about him. When I think of the goodness. When I think about what he's done. And when I think about all he's given me. And when I think about how great he is, uh, all it takes is a thought. Come on here. All it takes is a thought. All it takes is a thought. All I got to do is think about it, how he got me out of my last situation. And a praise comes up. All I got to think about how he canceled cancer in my body in 91 and a praise comes up. All I got to think about is how in 2013 they had to operate on my vocal cords and God took away precancerous scar tissue and a praise comes up. All I got to do is think about it. All I got to do is think about it. And a praise wells up in my belly. Because God brought me this far. God moved heaven and earth. God canceled hell to bring me this far. God canceled the plan of the enemy to bring me this far. God canceled sickness to bring me this far. God canceled the enemy natural to bring me this far. God tripped things up and God exposed things. God lifted me over the traps and God took me through the pitfall. To bring us this far. He brought us. He brought us. Something is definitely taking place in this earth. We are dealing with, as I forestated, we're dealing with situations. If we don't understand what the next steps are, all we can do is trust in God. Because our trust in him brought us this far. While this pandemic is in its rage, a racial social explosion happens around the world. In the midst of a pandemic, the death of one man caused an uprising cry for equality. And we can't even deal with the death and the sickness 
without seeing the death and the sickness in our racial world. It's a pandemic medical and a pandemic racial. Six, 50 plus years ago, 50 plus years ago, it happened. 50 plus years ago, dogs were unleashed upon protesters. Water hoses were opened up in Alabama against protesters. Protesters were beaten. Protesters were scourged. Protesters were killed. All marching for equality and freedom. Assassinations happened. 68 and 8 years old, I had to watch. Five years old, I had to watch them walking across the Selma Bridge and seeing them accosted and brutalized. Sitting with my mother watching this, seeing her cry. Yeah. I went through this already. I went through this already. And then when you think that there's so much progress, so much progress. 50 some odd years later, you're seeing the same thing happen. They're still lynching three young black boys, two in California, one in the South, still lynching them, leaving them hanging on trees. Yeah. Now killing them in front of our face because of cameras. Now we can see what was happening in secret. And it caused an uproar, caused a rage, an outcry. I've already been through this. And now to see it again causes a disturbance in my spirit. But then I got to remember. Then I remember. I got to remember. Hitherto, the Lord brought us out of that. And he brought us this far. If we trust him, he will bring us to our future and our expected end. If he did it before, I don't hear anybody. If he did it before, beloved, he will do it again. So we will trust him. So we will sit back and use our past experiences as markers. What he did then, that's my marker. What he did over here, that's my remembrance. The Bible said, and they took stones they took stones and placed the stones in mitzvah, between mitzvah and Shen. They placed a stone upon stone and built a monument. And they named it Ebenezer. You have got to put stones and markers in the places where God did great things. You got to remember what he did in your last dilemma. And you got to mark it based on how he came through, not based on what you went through. You got to mark it based on how he came through in that dilemma. You got to go back to where he healed and where he provided and where he gave peace and where he made a way and where he delivered and put markers there. Markers there. And that'll be your remembrance. And that will be called your Ebenezer. If you brought me out of this, I will remember. If he brought me to this place, I will remember. Ebenezer, hitherto hath the Lord helped us. So now, we must recommit ourselves as I close. We must recommit ourselves and go back and remember what he's done. 
Remember what he's done when you lay in the hospital. Remember what he did when you thought this may be the last go around. Remember, remember. I, I want you to remember, Damon, when you lay in the hospital and all the times God, the enemy attacked your body and God still raised you up. Put a marker every place he raised you up. Every time you're able to get up out of that bed and go back into worship. Put a marker there. Put a marker there. And to every one of you, just go back. Looking back over your life. They used to say, look where he brought me from. Oh, look where he brought me from. Brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light. Oh, look where he brought me from. The old saints, they would keep account of what God did. We look at what God did and scrape our plate and ask him for more. No, don't scrape that plate. Make a marker so that you can go back in times of trouble and say, if he did it before, he'll do it again. Hallelujah. Same God right now, same God back then. Same, same, same God, same God. So to every one of you, take heart. My time is up. Every one of you, take heart. Because God is not finished yet. The only reason why we're still alive, listen to me. The only reason why we're still alive is because God's not finished yet. That doesn't cause you to rejoice. It's because God is not finished yet in your life with your life he's not finished God's not finished yet so what you've got to do is say God I've got to live out your expectations being that you granted me another day I got to live out your expectations evidently I'm not paying attention to you there's more in my life than I even thought for you to keep me alive there must be something more so let me fulfill your expectations. Let me live out your dream. Let me fulfill what you purposed. And I will not close my eyes until I do. For you brought me. Somebody say, you brought me. You brought me this far. Everyone standing. Wow. 